Hello, I'm Carlos. In this video, I will showcase the watercolor brushes. This is the first brush category I created. The default watercolor brushes are good enough, but they lack in variation. You can sort the brush groups by dragging the dotted icon on the right of the group name. I ordered them with the same order I already have before. Let's start with flat brushes. The flat brushes are brushes with flat shape. All of them use tilt rotation, this adds a lot of expressivity in watercolor. The dry brushes always are being affected by paper grain, even if you have high water. The uneven brush is useful to apply brush strokes with random areas unpainted. The flat brush is considered the standard one. The other flat brushes from 2 to 5 have different behavior each one. The flat loaded brushes at default settings add a lot of pigment. These are the best ones if you want to cover your artwork with opaque color. The gentle brushes are useful to apply small amounts of paint. They also have small amount of water. So, they are good to apply glaze brush strokes or to apply wet on wet effects. Remember that, when you try to mimic real wet on wet technique, you must wet the entire layer by pressing Shift L. The eroded brushes are very interesting. These brushes are created to mimic eroded or wasted brushes. They have small amount of water. This way, they produce very interesting and painterly effects in watercolor. The flat-sided brushes mimic the traditional brushes when you tilt them. The bottom area of the brush strokes apply a dry effect, being affected by the paper texture. Let's go with the round brushes. The first three brushes apply different round shapes. The round tapered is good to paint foliage or stylized brush strokes.
The round taper too is the same, but has some bristles. The round sided are the same as the flat ones, with a round shape. The round eroded are the same as the flat ones, with a round shape. The gentle brushes are the same as the flat brushes, with a round shape. They may be better suited for wet-on-wet -wet technique than the flat ones, because the round shapes are better to spread the pigments evenly. The loaded brushes are good to paint at maximum color opacity. The round paper is a brush that is always affected by the paper texture. Change your paper or use any structure to apply different textures. The round uneven brushes leave some areas unpainted. The expression brushes apply random brush strokes. They are pretty good to create rough shapes. The dry brushes always are affected by paper. They also have a low amount of water, so they are good for texturing effects. The detailer brushes may need to be restored to default values, especially the wet version. The rake brushes emulate real rake brushes. This means brushes that create parallel lines. I added some variations over the default rakes. They are useful to create grass or hairs. You usually paint first in paint mode. Then you change to blend mode to make it look not so sharp. The rake random is very interesting. Each brush stroke creates different lines in different sizes. The splats, in this case, are more like stains or spots of paint, instead of splats. These splats are very sensitive to tilt. With more brush tilt, the splat shapes are being more stretched.
The Splat Builder is maybe my preferred brush of all, especially the watercolor version. It creates big and random splat areas. It's very expressive. It's good for so many uses. It's a good cloud creator. It's also good to create treetops. It's amazing to create abstracts, or to be used with the techniques explained in the course Spontaneous Watercolor. And, of course, it's good to create splats. Use it in paint and mix mode to create even more interesting shapes. The watercolor version is just amazing. The dabs and textures group is full of brushes which cannot be categorized in other groups. They are also good to add textures to your paintings. The abstract brush is good to create random shapes. The organic brushes have undetermined texture each one. The tree brushes are created to paint foliage on the trees. But they are also good for any texturing purpose. The particle brushes create random particle effects. The difference between each particle brushes is the amount and shapes. The dirt brushes have this name because they resemble dirt. The rocks brush don't look so rocky as the oil version. But I keep it because it creates a very nice texturing effect when used with watercolor. The other rock brushes add different rock shapes. The sponge is a stamping brush, not like if you're using sponges to drag paint around the canvas. The last four brushes are reused ones from my previous watercolor brush pack. I like them so much and are very useful, so I decided to include them. The nature brushes will be showcased on a different video. I hope you like the brushes.